I'm hanging out at Jack's Bicycle Center in Irvine, California, and they carry a bunch of Trek models. I'm getting to check out the Trek Lift Plus that comes in a low step, as you see here. Nice kind of double tube design, keeps it stiff. And the high step version. They actually have four different sizes. So the two smaller sizes um, are low step only. And then the three, there's kind of an overlap uh, for this high step. And I like that the high step actually has this sort of bent top tube just lowers the standover height a little bit. Pretty nice stuff. And, and these bikes are both a little more casual. You could use them for urban kind of riding. And I love that they've got the bosses here for adding a rear rack if you want to, and even fenders kind of got the holes there. Um, as well as these front, I, I thought this was like, you could possibly use this for front rack, but I think it's, it's meant for their fenders that are just really solid. The next step up from this model is the Conduit Plus, and it actually has fenders and a really cool pannier like lock rack thing. Um, it's $200 more than this. This one's $27.99, so not super cheap, but you're getting track with two-year warranty, a bunch of different frame sizes, solid stuff like mechanical disc brakes here, 160 millimeter rotors, and of course the Shimano steps, battery, drive system, and a nice little display up here. So it's very smooth. It keeps weight low and center on these bikes. It's efficient. You're gonna get great range. Um, it's relatively new. I, I saw this on, I think it's the Raleigh Maceo IE in 2015. It was one of the first bikes to have it and it had like an internally geared hub. Um, it sounds like in some cases that that hub was having some, some difficulties because this is a powerful system, right? And if it's pulling while the hub is being shifted, that could be a little bit problematic. Um, whereas this one is just using a standard cassette, pretty high end stuff, Shimano Dior. 10 speeds, trigger shifter right here, nice little window up top. Love that they've got these really uh, comfortable touch points, right? Like these elite sort of rubberized ergonomic grips with lockers, riser, sort of a handlebar and adjustable stem. Even the seat, it's really oversized and pretty comfortable, but it's firm. It's firm and so it's a little bit more active and you, you shouldn't have like your thighs scraping. If you're someone who just wants to use this in the neighborhood or something, you might, that might be the first place to kind of consider doing a replacement. You can also get seat post suspension, but these bikes do not have any other suspension element. You'll notice that the fork is just, just solid. It's a rigid fork uh, and that keeps it light. This is, you know, it's, it's like in the mid 40 uh, pounds range. So, you know, pretty good. A lot of electric bikes are close to that 50, maybe 55. Um, so that's a, that's one of the, the upsides. And of course, if you go to the smaller frame size, it's gonna be a little bit lighter as well. And I have all the specs back at the website. They have a cool graphic that shows like reach and all this cool stuff. Of course, again, cause this is a legit brand that um, is, is, you know, they're, they're like one of the biggest bicycle manufacturers in the world. So it's cool that they're getting into electric and, and using a quality system like steps. Um, I wanna hit some of the other specs before I get into that too much though. So 26 by two inch uh, tires, bone trager, that's like, Trek's in-house brand for the saddles and grips and stuff. It's all like bone trouser stuff. Two inches is the diameter. It's a little bit, a little bit wider, and that's going to be nice. It's going to absorb some some of the shock and bumps because again, no suspension on this. So just the upright riding, a little bit of a swept back bar, and the tires. You're getting efficiency, lightweight, but a little bit less on the comfort side uh, if it's really bumpy terrain. You can deflate these a little bit. They sort of have a PSI recommendation. 35 to 65, okay? And of course at 35, it's gonna be really soft and squishy, but way less efficient. But who cares? You've got a mid-drive. It's gonna give you excellent uh, support and power. And I think it's like 50 Newton meters torque on this thing. So uh, the Bosch system by comparison is about 60. Uh, 50 is still fantastic and you get three levels of assist to choose from. So it's a, it's a really good setup. Uh, the mid-drive is leveraging your rear cassette. So if you're in a low gear, because you're struggling up a hill, well, that's helping the motor. The motor gets a low gear too. If you're in a high gear, trying to hit that top mile per hour, 20 mile per hour speed, uh, it it's gonna benefit there too. So that's cool. You've got this nice kind of protective chain ring on the front. There's no chain guards. And again, no fenders or anything. You can add some of that stuff, uh, but at least this is gonna keep your pants a little bit protected uh, or your dress as it were uh, while you're riding. So I do like that. Kind of more basic plastic pedals here, but they've got good, um, good kind of grips. And actually this might've been more of a demo bike. I wanted to show both of them out here. This is, I think, production and it has aluminum. They're gonna be a little bit stiffer with these rubber touch points. I think this is actually what you'd, what you'd get um, on, the, on the real thing. So I, I love that. Like all in all, pretty good system. A lot of the wires are sort of run through the frame, which keeps it looking 
really clean. Um, this one's not, but these ones are. So it's, I guess it's kind of a mix. Great kickstand back there, keeps it nice and straight. There's the disc brakes. And you know what? I messed up earlier by saying they were mechanical because they are hydraulic. So they're gonna be a lot smoother and uh, a little bit easier to pull. In my experience, maybe not as easy to adjust. You have to get some help from, from a shop or something, but you do get the two year warranty on that. So at least you can come in if you have any issues or whatever. So yeah, let's talk about the drive system at this point. Uh, the first thing you're gonna notice is that it's a pretty clean cockpit, but you've got this little button bar here and that's designed to be easy to reach while you're riding and something that you can kind of figure out. There's only three buttons, so it becomes pretty intuitive. And then the display, it is adjustable, but it stays pretty fixed. You can kind of see there's teeth down there. So you'll kind of want to get it set up right and then it's gonna, it's gonna be right where you want. One of the cool things about it is that it is removable. So there's a little tab and you can take this with you. You don't have to leave it on the bike and worry about theft or vandalism. I really like that. And same with the battery. The battery pack is removable. Uh, it's got this little key here. You don't have to leave the key in when you're riding, which is great but you do have to take the battery pack off in order to charge it. That's one of the big, like, ah, oh, bummer for me with this system. Like the Bosch system, you can just charge it right while it's on the bike. You don't have to worry about it. This one, you have to take it off. There's no charging port. And you might be thinking like, oh, that's fine. I mean, I leave my bike at the rack or leave my bike in the garage where it's cold, where it's hot. You, you, don't, you don't want your battery exposed to that kind of stuff. You're gonna take it inside and charge it. But some people, like me, I, I live in a place where I always bring my bike inside. I store it like next to my bed and I plug it right in. And so taking, having to like take the battery off is just a bit of a chore and you know, it means you could drop it accidentally more easily. It just means more interaction. So here we go, you kind of twist the key and it slides out. It's a really nice system. I mean, it, it slides beautifully. It looks good. Kind of see there's a charging port right there and it's, it's a pretty big plug that they're using. So it's just not quite, as polished, but this is a really big battery. It's 36 volt, 11.6 amp hours, 418 watt hours. So that's, that's pretty phenomenal. The motor size down there is uh, 250 watt nominal, 500 watt peak. So really powerful. Again, 50 Newton meters of torque. Shimano's doing good stuff and you know, it's small. It's really compact right there. It looks great. It's built into the kind of the custom frame. Um, it's decent. I just wish you could charge the battery on the bike. The other complaint I have is that when you go to turn the bike on, you actually have to turn the battery on. You, you know, you can't just come up here and be like, on. You have to go down here, press this button, and there we go. It lights up. The display comes on and it's backlit. Um, it's kind of a lot of glare right now, but if it's dark out, you can kind of see that. A lot of great information here. You've got five little battery ticks to give you some idea of how much capacity you've got. And if you go and kind of click this black button over here, you're gonna cycle through some other options. So we've got speed up here, pedal assist level time. And then that black button is gonna take us from average speed to max speed, distance, odometer, range. And then this is kind of cool. There's this big range menu that says like, if you're in eco mode, 36 miles. If you're in normal, 32. If you're in high, 27. So it's giving kind of on the fly updates about how far it thinks you can go based on how much battery capacity is left and the pedal assist level you choose. So I, I like that. It's, it's a really cool system and it, it works well. You've only got three levels of assist to choose from here. So we'll arrow up from off to eco, that's 50%. So basically it measures how much torque you're applying and it gives you half of that back. Okay, and then arrow up one more time that's like 100, and then once more to high, that's 200%, okay? So if you're putting out 20 watts, you get 60 watts total. You, 20, plus the bike, 40 equals 60. So very cool. And this is a very responsive design. I mean, it's kind of got the speed sensor in the wheel, measures if you're moving or not. It's got cadence sensor, and then there's a torque sensor. So I did notice definitely that as I was pedaling along when I push down a little bit harder, it was, you know, it, it accelerated and it uses a more traditionally sized chain ring in the front versus a small one. So it's just, it kind of looks nice, blends in, um, and it's a little bit more powerful here and it's pulling that chain. So that's really how all of this stuff works. And uh, I think I'm excited to just get on and ride this thing around and give you a little, little demo so you can hear what it sounds like. Okay. I got the bike out on a quiet stretch of of road kind of neighborhood just perfect for for this setup 
I'm in the highest level of assist, and I'm gonna shift gears up, and you can kind of hear the shift sensing. It is designed to sort of ease off when you're shifting so that it won't jar that cassette and your derailleur, which is a good thing. Um, there's a little bit, it's a little bit more spastic than some of the other ones. Um, I'm, I'm just kind of getting used to it. And again, I'm in the highest level of assist, so the motor can really be putting out some good power. So to me, I can definitely hear the motor easing off, but it, it just feels a little bit more delayed. It's almost like the shifting goes bang, and then there's the kind of the, the sensing thing that's like, oh, and it shuts off the motor. Uh, better than nothing, and again, I'm, I'm purposely applying a little bit more force and shifting quickly for, for this review in the highest level of assist. It's nice that it, it has it at all. Um, and when you're shifting down, of course, it's much, much smoother. There we go, we hit our top speed of 20 miles per hour there. Disc brakes are coming in real handy, nice and smooth. It's a great ride, you know? When you're on uh, smooth concrete like this or asphalt, it's just very efficient with those tires, kind of the almost like city style, but just a little bit bigger. It rides really steadily, like I'm kind of doing the no hands thing here. And uh, it just, it kind of tracks just fine. And that's one of the things I, I think they were really trying to emphasize you can see the fork bends forward a little bit here the larger tires a little bit more weight so it's just got some good momentum it's a good setup uh, definitely a little bit more expensive um, we talked about the brand being great and having having the hydraulic disc brakes that i messed up and some of this other stuff here uh, quality stuff i think i'd love to see them refine the battery pack a little bit and just improve the charging interface but i think for most people it's like well whatever you take the battery off, it, it can go really far because it is so efficient. It's pedal assist only. There's no throttle mode, but there is a really cool walk mode here. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and arrow down to off, and then I'm gonna hold down for a few seconds, and now it says walk mode. So what that is, go ahead and get off the bike. Now, and at this point, like if I had my backpack on and I was walking up a hill or walking with a friend, I can just press down on that arrow again and see the bike kind of walks itself. The motor kicks on and it gives you a couple few miles per hour worth of energy. So you just don't have to push and fatigue yourself. And uh, that's nice. That's a cool feature. I think it's pretty common in Europe. The other thing I noticed is there's a lot of beeping going on. So you get the tactile feedback and then there's also audio feedback here that, yep, you pressed a button. And when you get to the top, it kind of beeps twice at you. Hey, I'm already at the highest is what I imagine it's saying. I just finished the ride and uh, one of the things I, I wanted to highlight again is that with the high step version you've got that top tube could work for hanging this on a rack because this is a little bit lighter uh, and the battery is easily removable this would be a good one for you know using with a car rack a lot of other ones you almost have to put it on sort of a platform and something like this would just be easier to carry upstairs or on the bus with you uh, the other thought I had is like okay you know you might want to remember to to turn off the battery pack when you're done using it I think it auto times off, but just a little extra to remember. And I was surprised that they, they didn't put bottle cage bosses on that seat tube there because they, they do have that on the Conduit Plus, which is very similar to this. It doesn't quite have that, that bent top tube. So maybe it was a space issue on the smaller size frame. So it seems like there's plenty of room. Uh, again, there's room for a rack and fenders and stuff. It's just something I always think about because you get thirsty, uh, whether you've got a motor or not, you're riding around and it's kind of a nice thing to have. I think that's, about it you know the the lift plus it's cool that it comes in those multiple sizes and different frame types um, 27.99 pretty good if you have any questions about this just feel free to leave them in the comments um, i've reviewed a whole bunch of city bikes urban style stuff and that's back at the site electricbikereview.com along with all the really detailed specs comparisons and sizes and stuff so see you there ride safe